Hello, welcome to new scene anatomy video. Today I want to give you a first look at the new synthesizer from Rob Parpen. It's GoTo. GoTo is a very easy to use synthesizer plugin for PC and Mac. This is very interesting for beginners. And as you know, maybe for uh, plugins from uh, Rob Parpen, these are uh, very powerful, they have many features, and for a lot of people, they are maybe a bit complicated. Go to it goes in another direction and it's very easy to use and especially great for beginners. Uh, let's look at the GUI here or at the structure of the synthesizer and we have here first of all one oscillator. Yes, it's only one oscillator, but what is cool here, um, you can morph and bend, you can design our own waveforms with it and it's quite cool. So you can not drawing own waveforms, but you can uh, morph them and blend them together and create so very complex new uh, waveforms. As you can see here, for example, we have here a saw wave, and here an, again a saw wave four. So it's a bit dif different uh, saw wave, and the engine allows you here to morph between different waveforms. So you see, you can morph here between the different waveforms or the two saw waveforms here. And this can be um, naturally same as in many other uh, Rapapen plugins be uh, automated and so be very lively designed. And you can here select from sine wave, saw wave, square waves, triangle, res1, this looks like this. And so you can morph between this both waveforms and you have your half sine, sine saw, sine square. It's also many uh, spectrum waves from vocals, glass, harmonics, and more, and even more. So you have uh, 73 spectrum waves and many older here also. And then, um, as I said, you can bend them very powerfully. So you have here a spread knob and a sub oscillator. So let's check maybe this out. And um, what is now here possible to, um, there are several different modes available. So if you have here a mix, so you mix two waveforms together for creating new sounds. You have also a morph feature. This looks like this now. I take your saw. And then you have also your ring mod, so they apply a ring mod to the morphing feature here. Then we have also FM, what is cool beca uh, because this adds a lot of distortion to your sounds. Then we have Wave Shaper. Then we have an Interpolation. And we have a Range. And you see with the interpolation, uh, with the range, you get a quite very strange sounds of it. Then you have here also a symmetry, oscillator symmetry, symmetry uh, parameter, which change the symmetry of your waveforms. Then let's go again to mix 
and you have here also a symmetry mod so you can modulate it and you have your speed and what is cool here it is a hidden LFO because uh, you have here an LFO but here is also an LFO which is accessible with the modulation part so uh, you can modulate here the symmetry with an independent LFO then or let's check out maybe this one also Then you have here also an X and Y morph. You maybe remember that the Subboom Bass has now this X and Y, the Blue 2 and much other synthesizer from Rap Papen. And this allows you to morph between different waveforms. And what is cool here, it's not only for the waveforms, but it's also for other parameters. As you can see here, it's uh, X to X. So you have here, for example, you can add here the filter to it and the, uh, the effects and you have also the Y and you have the same also the pa same parameters here to map and this can be very crazy if you put now different uh, points in it and then morph and this can be done live or in a record mod so you go now to record and then you can paint like this and then play it. You can change also the speed. And this is uh, possible here with the filters, uh, with effects and more. And you can um, add, change here also the, the way how you made it, so edit. And you see how this curve is made. And you can change also here, for example, this entire row. So you can make it even crazier. Then you have here also different modes from free, polyphonic and mono. Then a loop, if it's on a loop or not. And a sync, you have the different points. You have the space. This is a grid, so you can see it here in a space. And you have the timing. So you can see it's only one oscillator maybe, but it's quite powerful how many different waveforms you can design with it. Then this oscillator block goes down to the filter and here you can find some good known filters from Ropapen. You have here 12 dB low pass filter. Let's go maybe in other sound. So it is 24 dB low pass version 2. But you have here also the 12 dB. You have here a notch, you have a different other low pass, a band pass, and again a notch, but you have also a comb filter, which is quite cool for creating, especially for sound design people. And um, you have here also the cutoff, the resonance, an envelope, the velocity, the key track, and the mod wheel. And as you can see on the bottom, we have here the filter envelope with the classical ADSR. And you can change also the, the direction of it or how it is formed. So you have here the classic way, but you can also uh, invert it. So for creating other sounds, it's cool for making using this one. So you can change it here very easily. So it's very precisely made. It's easy to understand how, and what is cool, you see directly how it's made. So it's not only parameters of it. So you see, okay, this is the way how the envelope works. 
And then you have also an high pass filter uh, with key track, with cutoff and with a resonance here. And this form then the filter block. And for me it's cool because uh, you have here the COM filter which offers a lot of different sounds also in such an easy to use synthesizer. Then you have goes to the filter engine goes then to the amp here. And you have here also an ADSL envelope. And you have here a distortion inside the amp. Let's check this one. Then you have also your penna for length uh, to the left and to the right. You have a velocity, so volume of the envelope controlled by velocity and the volume. Um, Talking about uh, um, modulation, as I said, you have here a filter envelope, an M envelope, and you have here on the left side a third envelope, which can be mapped to any other parameter. So this can be effects, the oscillators, the filters, and more. And you have here a uh, versatile LFO. It's only one LFO, but as I said, you have here on the in the oscillator section also a hidden LFO for the symmetry mod. And for the LFO, you have here a sign, so you can go very high in the audio rate modulation, so you can create FM also with it. Um, then you have triangle, saw, square, and sample and hold also, so it is hidden inside the LFO here. Um, then you have here on the top, on the bottom, the mod section, so it's a modulation matrix, and you can see you have here different sources, you have also the mod wheel, channel aftertouch, polyphonic after, uh, aftertouch, velocity, pitch band, and more. And also CCs, note random, for example, and more. And if you have the free envelope, the filter envelope, so this can be also used for other parameters, and much more. The X and Y, and here for des destination, and what is for me very interesting and very good here, that you have can mod um, add also to the effects, a modulation so often you can modulate the effect parameters and it's here nicely done. Um, talking about um, effects you have here a chorus. Let's take an auto preset maybe. Then you have here also a flanger and a phaser, and I personally don't understand why the developers uh, not. It's not possible to activate both effects at once, so it's only flanger or phaser. And uh, let's check out this one. And uh, last but not least, you have also a delay or a reverb. So here again, I don't understand. Maybe for CP for the CPU consumption, I would prefer to see if they would add here the de delay and the reverb. Actually, you can only use the delay or the reverb, so not together. Let's check out maybe this one also. As you can see, then you have um, in the effects section, you have here the distortion, then you have a chorus, flanger, phaser, delay, and reverb, and all parameters are here um, modelable with an envelope or with an LFO and or, or here with the X and Y pad. So this can be very powerful if you design very deep patches. Um, then you have here also a arpeggiator or sequencer style. So you can put your own uh, notes in it, with here with the key entry. You have here the 16 steps. So it's 
only a 16 step it's not like a 32 or 64 um, steps can be deactivated you have tie you have slide tune velocity and cool here you can also set um, chords in it so you can put here different chords in it and then uh, make cool rhythmic sounds a uh, chord rhythmics and you have your a free section and uh, the speed can be different speeds here you have here different modes or a code mode a sequencer mode and different uh, classical arpeggiatos like up down up down down up random ordered then we have octave and lock it up and tight mode so you and not to forget you have also on the right side here are the play modes so you have your up legato mono and poly then you have here the unison mode which goes not only in octaves but also in chords what is quite powerful for an easy to use synth then you have here in detune a plus a spread a drift parameter exponential envelopes a dial envelope then um, bend now a bend down and bend up uh, for the pitch wheel for example and you have here um, also port mode with different parameters and not to forget um, the go to comps also with the new Rob Papen um, manager preset manager here so you can see it's very nicely done and the first version comes also with a lot of presets already included and we talk and I want to remember it's an easy to use synth so it's very powerful in my opinion and it can done a lot of things here and also same for uh, go to as in other plugins from wrap up and you have here the original and edit mode so you can step through the original preset and then you the new one so you can compare which is now better and press on it you see okay that's my uh, it's designed by Papen and all this stuff. You can the mini channel and other stuff. I think uh, the best way to see how it sounds, I give you now uh, a lot of presets to show uh, the sound character of GoTo. So stay tuned.
I hope you enjoy the sound demo of the GoTo, and in my opinion, Rob Harpin creates here a very interesting synthesizer for beginners. What I really love here is the way how it's designed. It's very clear, you know, here are the oscillators, here are the filters, here are the LFO envelopes, the ARP, and it's very straightforward designed. So it's, there is no obstacle how, how you use it or you, how you manage to create this and this sound. So it's very easy made and it's a super good synthesizer for beginners. The sound is maybe not that analog style, maybe like a diva or a monarch or like a mini moog, but it goes in that direction that Rob Huppen always made. It's a cool synth with a very powerful features like here in the oscillators where you can form own waveforms and which gives you a lot of different possibilities. And so it's mainly a synth for EDM, for uh, really electronic music, maybe a bit of like, um, experimental also with here with the X and Y. And so for me GoTo is a very versatile and super easy to use synth. And please let me know in the comments below what do you think about GoTo? Is it a synth for you or maybe you search something more uh, big and more powerful? It would be cool to discuss with you. And it's I'm not sure yet, but uh, I heard it will be available for, for um, 90, 49 euro or it's very low in price. And I can see also the CPU consumption is very, very low. Also in my on my old computer, so it's a MacBook Pro, the, uh, the consumption is at 2 or 3%, what is very low for a new synthesizer plugin. I hope you enjoy my first look at GoTo by Rob Papen. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a positive thumb and a subscription for more future videos. Big thanks for watching and hope to see you again very soon in one of my next videos. Bye!